Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to night two of Passing the Mic, the American Experiment. Uh, this event is, my name is Sophia Snow and I am the director of the Office of Multicultural Arts Initiatives right here at UW Madison, home of the first and only full tuition hip hop scholarship, the first wave program. We're super excited to have you all here with us tonight. Um, we are partnering with UW Madison's arts division to bring you an incredible showcase um, with the Interdisciplinary Arts Residency Program. Um, tonight, we have some very, very special guests with us. Uh, and I'm just gonna jump right into their bios to give you the true introduction. So first, we have the legendary Ursula Rucker. Please go up in the chat with comments and hearts and likes. Um, Ursula Rucker is a Philadelphia born poet, mother, activist, and recording artist. She has been performing, recording, and releasing works for over 20 years. She has five solo recordings and collaborated on over 100 songs, including with The Roots. Ursula has been awarded the Leeway Foundation Art for Change and Transformation Awards and a Pew Fellowship. She is the subject of the documentary short poet and continues to perform her one woman show and live memoir, My Father's Daughter, a true hip hop legend. Please, please give a warm welcome to Ursula Rucker. My goodness. Wow. Thank you, Sophia. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, okay. Ursula is a guest artist for Michelle Bird McPhee's Fall UW Division of the Arts Interdisciplinary Artist Residency Program, teaching the course on hip hop culture and women of the world. Um, Michelle Bird McPhee is the founder and executive director of Ladies of Hip Hop. Bird McPhee has been working for many years to recontextualize spaces and conversation of hip hop culture along gender, sex, cultural and socio-historical and racial lines for decades. She also situates the arts and dance techniques in spaces that honor and acknowledge their roots and the many creative pioneers who have shaped them. This is especially important given the ways in which black dance has been co-opted in studio appropriation, given its community cultural origins. Michelle Bird McPhee earned her BS from Temple University and an MS in nonprofit arts management management from Drexel University. She has also spent the last 10 years working as a production coordinator at Brooklyn Academy of Music and then a senior music coordinator at Late Night with Seth Meyers. She is also serves as the chief strategic and artistic advisor for It's Showtime NYC, besides her ongoing commitment to the Ladies of Hip Hop Festival. Please make some noise in the chat for our very own artist in residence, Michelle Bird McPhee. Hi, Sophia. Thank Hi. you welcome, so welcome. much. What up, Earth? Thank you. Thank Lots. you so much. A lot. We're going to talk about it. We're going we're gonna to get into it. I still got some bios. We still got to invite some more people to the conversation. Um, next up, we have another living legend and icon, Dwayne Holland. Professor Dwayne Holland comes to UW Madison after serving as a full-time associate professor of dance and hip hop instructor at Boston Conservatory at Berkeley in Boston, Massachusetts. His professional background includes work as a performer with some of the top hip hop and modern dance choreographers in the world, including Ronald K. Brown, Garth Fagan, Bill T. Jones, Rennie Harris, Maurice Hines, and Makita Thomas. He has served as the assistant artistic director of Rennie Harris Peer Movement, the first 
theatrical hip hop dance company in the US and has performed in the original cast of The Lion King on Broadway. We are so honored to have him join us this year as faculty in the dance department. Please go up in the chat for Professor Dwayne Holland. Hey, Welcome. Yes. Thank you so much. No, thank you. And soon we will be joined by Mark Bamuti Joseph. And I also, I have to give his bio, even though we're gonna get the conversation started. But what's special about tonight is, you know, passing the mic is about an intergenerational dialogue. We have a group of 30 youth artist activists from all across the country tuned in tonight and doing workshops so that they could perform on Thursday. Um, and we're speaking to this idea of the American experiment, specifically thinking about how to connect the generations. And in this conversation tonight, we're gonna have a, a different type of intergenerational dialogue from our current interdisciplinary artists and residents, Michelle Bird McPhee, and our former <laughs> um, interdisciplinary artists and residents, Mark Bamuthi Joseph. Um, so I'll give his bio to uh, Bamuthi while also engaging in a deeply fulfilling and successful artistic career, proudly serves as vice president and artistic director of social impact at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, DC. A 2017 TED Global Fellow, an inaugural recipient of the Guggenheim Social Practice Initiative, and an honoree of the United States Artist Rockefeller Fellowship. He is also the founding program director of the exemplary nonprofit Youth Speaks and is found co which they're also joining us this week, some current young people from Youth Speaks, and is the co-founder of Life is Living, a national series of one day festivals which activate under-resourced parks and affirm peaceful urban life. But Muthi's evening length work, created in collaboration with composer Daniel Bernard Rumain, The Just and the Blind, was commissioned by Carnegie Hall and premiered to a sold out house at Carnegie in March 2019, right before the quarantine. And we'll also be having a viewing of a digital rendition of The Just and the Blind this Friday. So please don't forget to register. You could still catch it this Friday, passing the mic. Um, back in 2007, Bamuthi was the interdisciplinary artist in residence here at UW-Madison, a position now held by the very beloved Michelle Bird McPhee. His residency in 2007 gave birth to several multicultural hip hop and urban arts initiatives we carry on today and laid the foundation for our Office of Multicultural Arts Initiatives to found the first wave hip hop and urban arts learning community to begin just the following year. So we have a deep, deep love for this residency program and a deep thanks. And Michelle, you are carrying the torch so beautifully this semester, despite the pandemic, despite the craziness of it all. Um, but we're just so grateful for you all to join us in this conversation. Um, and with that being said, Michelle, I'd love to just pass it off to you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here with us. Thank you, Sophia, for that amazing introduction. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Um, hello to Ursula and Dwayne. I get to hang out with y'all all week long. Again, I'm so happy. Um, yes, uh, as Sophia said, my name is Michelle Bird McPhee. I'm the founding director of Laser Hip Hop Festival, among other things. Um, but that is my passion, and that's how we are all connected on here tonight, as well as Mark. Um, I want to first say um, thank you to Omai and First Wave. Uh, thank you to uh, University of Madison Department of the Arts and UW Madison Department of Dance. Hello to my students who are giving all the shouts out in the chat and the chat comments are cracking me up. So keep them coming. It makes this feel a little bit more, uh, a little bit more real and keep us engaged as we, um, you know, talk with these great artists that are here tonight. And so as Sophia said, um, I've been here since um, the start of the semester. Um, and I say here, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing it digitally, but uh, we're doing the best that we can, you know, I, I think with the support of uh, Professor Dwayne and, and an amazing team, we've had a really great class and we started to kick off having our guest artists, um, all women um, who are somehow connected to my journey in hip hop culture. And with us tonight, we have Ursula Rucker, who is 
a fellow Philly John. And if you don't know what that is, just Google it, you'll find out. Um, but, you know, she has been part of my story and my journey um, through this culture as I was developing work, as I was just, you know, figuring out who I was as a person. Um, we're both mothers and, you know, our life, our lives and partners and, and friends and family are all within the culture. And so that, you know, it's just an honor to have someone like her, you know, rolling with me. Um, and, you know, once I got this opportunity through, uh, you know, Professor Holland, who is also a Philadelphia John, <laughs> I can still call you a Philly John too, it's not just for women. Um, you know, it, it just feels like family. And, you know, even with Mark, he'll be back on, you know, he and I had the opportunity to work together at the Painted Bride in Philly, uh, I think 2004, 2005. So to be able to come back and, you know, uh, work with him in this capacity and even follow in his footsteps, because um, he's a trailblazer, we know that for sure. Um, but to be able to kind of fill the same shoes that he did, uh, you know, as an AIRP fellow um, is really special. And I hope that, you know, some of the things that we're creating, the relationships that we're creating, um, the programming that we're creating will live on uh, just like some of Mark's did. So this is a really special opportunity for me. And I'm super, super excited and appreciative to be here. Um, Dwayne, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So, you know, Dwayne is my sponsoring faculty and my partner in crime in this. Um, you know, when he told me about the opportunity, you know, I was I was shocked for one because, you know, a lot of women in this culture don't get the opportunity to teach in higher education. So it's very special in that way. Um, and also, you know, he and I have crossed paths and worked together on other stuff and been friends for a really long time. So it was very exciting in that way to be able to have the opportunity to work together. And uh, so, yeah, what's, what's, what's up, Dwayne? Let's, let's get this chat going. Well, first and foremost, I just really want to say it's, it's truly been a blessing uh, to be absorbed by the UW Madison family and to have people really just believe in me and be behind me in uh, the department. Kay Corby, Andrea, Chris, Colette, uh, Lee Chao Ping, Jin Wen, everyone. I mean, it's uh, Peggy Choi. Everyone has really been extremely supportive. So when I uh, proposed this idea to bring you here, because I said, in order for me to really do this research, we need to approach it in a very egalitarian way in reference to gender and how it's represented and the fact that all voices are heard to be able to create a unified voice, which is essentially what, you know, what we do as Black Americans and as Black American artists. And I was just lucky that you were you were interested because of the work that you've been doing and the fact that you have been such a major advocate, not only for the culture itself, but for women and how they're situated in uh, the culture and how they're situated as a, as a very major uh, tool in, in actually making things happen, not only on stage, but off stage. And I have been able to be in spaces to take advantage of, of that type of love. So I. I called and and you were able to say come through and we were able to spend some time and uh, you know really build this space reflecting of uh, this continuum that we really want to be able to be clear that as we exist as Black Americans yes we are within a a lineage of Africanist aesthetic but being bodies uh, that have been on this journey of displacement and how we have always been able to find this space of healing through these fundamentals of, of survivorship through music, dance and, and, and theater and film. And um, it's a blessing to be from Philadelphia and, and remember walking in the Painted Bride and being afraid of Ursula for years because, you know, she's just got that goddess energy. And, you know, I understand why she has to be like that because of the, the the love and the intellect that she holds. And it took me a while to be able to understand how to approach her. And at the same time, um, you know, being in the club with you and, and being able to come to montage rehearsals and, you know, uh, being in the room with Rennie and having that opportunity to go from being a gymnast and being an artist of a different kind of being a machine, but really finding out what it is to be a, an individual of purpose and I found that by being in this family, being from Philadelphia, 
being from people that not only can, you know, do the thing, but talk about it as well and talk about why it is so important. So when I had this opportunity to come here, I had to represent my family and I had to go and find y'all. So you have no idea, you know, I'm just blessed and we just need to come together and follow through and do the mission. And I so appreciate you goddess for being here, Ursula, and for my, my phenomenal warrior brother, Mark, to be able to do something again with you is extremely a blessing. So thank you. Yes. And so, Urs, I'm going to open up your mic. And, uh, you know, we, we've been chatting. We had a, a nice long chat last night. Um, it's good to see you again tonight. And uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping tonight we get to hear you perform a little bit because we were so charged after the after the, the last chat. And I was like, oh, man, I just hear her voice. I want to hear her perform. Um, and yeah. so, yeah. So how are you doing tonight? Uh, you want the truth or? Yeah, let's go, man. <laughs> Keep it real. As real as we can. I mean, you know, just to, to you know, in a nutshell, we're 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 Philly, so we know we Philly is hurting right now. Yeah, it's a lot it's, going on. It's, it's Philly right now. You know what I mean? It's Philly in the spotlight for this horrendous thing we have to continuously experience over and over and over again. That yeah. just, you know, it's so hard to. To, to stomach and handle and deal with. And we still keep getting up and we still gather in spaces and places like this and, and be joyous. And, and like Dwayne said, you know, we're on this continuum and, uh, and we, we, we come from, we come from people who stayed in this continuum and, and, and still kept pushing forward. And um, we want to keep doing that too. So. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, I feel like if it wasn't for this, this opportunity um, to, to heal and share through music and dance, I don't, I kind of don't know what, where I would be mentally right now, you know? So for, for me, this is, this is all part of the healing process and how we deal every day. You know, you, you get up, you hear all the things, you see all the things, and then, you know, you get to kind of disconnect and, connect with, you know, the things that keep you going and motivated and loved and fed every day. And so, you know, um, rough day for sure. Um, rough couple days, um, but feeling better tonight and the last couple of nights being on with you. So um, I want to, I want to, you know, I know, I know all this stuff, but <laughs> for the folks that are joining us for the first time, I, I definitely want to ask you um, about some of your work. Um, you know, I don't, I don't actually don't even know if we talked so much about you working with, uh, working with the Roots and, um, and some of the other large artists that you've worked with. Um, you know, what is that like? I mean, because we know in, in Philly, you know, everybody's family. So you, if you're in the music business, you all know each other. You've all worked together at some point. You've all performed together at some point. Um, you just performed at their, uh, their, their 20 year anniversary of um, Things Fall Apart. Mm -hmm. To see that it was amazing. We lit up the stage, that huge out, outside, amazing stage that in LA. Um, yeah, tell us what is, that journey has been like because you've worked with them for years since they were the square boots. Right. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's 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 this beautiful thing, like Dwayne was saying, like I got so excited um when he was talking because I was thinking about that already. Look at us. You know, look at us in here. You know, I just remember us little little young Johns. You know what I mean? Like just, I mean, y'all to me, y'all still young Johns, but it's like whatever. Um, but yeah, we were just all share, you know, in these spaces, having a good time, um, trying to figure it out. What were we doing? Building up ourselves. Um, we we didn't know that we would be, you know, um, doing these kinds of things. You would be the um, uh, interdisciplinary artist in residence. Oh, I got that right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try every day. I try. I was worried. I was worried for a <laughs> <laughs> I <didn't try> this. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is just such a beautiful thing. So it it it's like that, right? We all just came up together, like we will really literally um just came up together having a good time with each other and um, being amazed and, and awed by each other. You know, every time somebody, one of us would pop up and start doing whatever it was that we did, like, oh, I didn't know you did that. 
right? You know? And then we would just start doing, and it's just like Philly is just so magical for that. So, um, yeah, just sitting at the paint of bride and Amir asking me to to come in and be the be the pinch hitter because Entezaki Shange was out of town, and and she was supposed to do the poem. Bless up, Entezaki. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know our goddess Entezaki, and you know there there are just things along our paths that even if we tried, we they would they would present themselves on our path, and this was one of them. You know, it was just like this invitation to. Um, I would say the most important thing about that first collaboration with The Roots was that it really set the stage for me from that point forward into the rest of my life to where I am right now for never censoring myself in my work. So, you know, that, oh, that collaboration so. right there is the one that was like, I was like, okay, if I'm gonna truly tell this story, you know, I'm gonna have to like go in and you know, if we're if we're Philly, we go in anyway on a daily basis. But so you have to put it in your art and make it work for your art. And so I said, okay, you know, let's 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 do this, Earth. And from that point forward, I never looked back. And I just I've always been doing it since then and fine-tuning it and figuring out how to do it and balancing it out and and all that. So yeah, that's that that's when I learned how to do that. Oh. Unlocking. Dope. And I, you know, I've always, you know, your work has stood out in that way to me that, you know, you have taken words that um, very often are used to demean women and kind of flipped it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I feel like used it with so much power. And, you know, I had a discussion with my class about, you know, talking about Cardi B and whether, you know, like what, what, you know, whether her work was empowering and what, you know, what she brings to the table and representation of women. Cause you know, I mean, I might be a little younger than you, but I'm not that much younger or maybe, maybe we might be the same age, but you know, so for me, I don't, I kind of don't, you know, like I was like, I, I, you know, I don't see it as empowering. It's a little much for me. Right. Um, and I'm a hip hop head, but I, I do see her empowering in other ways. And so that, you know, we had this discussion about language and um, whether you're, whether you're, she's taking that language, is, is it being fed to her and she's just saying the lyrics and so it's still from, you know, uh, a male perspective or is she really taking <coughs> those words and, and, and putting, you know, her, you know, and flipping it and utilizing it um, and empowering herself sexually, um, or, you know, in whatever capacity, I mean, mostly sexually <laughs> in whatever capacity, you know, um, she's using the words, but then I do think the sister, you know, she talks about politics. She talks about finances. She talks about, you know, uh, accounting. So for me, like there are ways that, you know, I think she- Did you say up. accounting? Yeah, yeah, she does. She stay talking about her money. Smart folks stay talking about their money. Um, but you know, she I, I feel like she engages uh, um, you know, a demographic, especially in hip hop and in black culture that's often written off, right? Um, subculture within a subculture, drug culture, all these folks that roll up in in those um, sets for whatever reasons, like I'm not getting into that part of it, but just getting into the part of like how she's engaging the people that are within our community that are written off. And so I see your work in the same way and, and, and but different in, in the sense that, you know, um, you take words that I, I honestly probably still don't say you know, and it just, it sounds so amazing. And so I've been saying in my head this whole time while you talking about Cardi B, it's just like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> hello, I mean, hello. <laughs> yes, yes, but you know, and, and but th there's ways in which y'all use the exact same uh, language, but it has a different feel to me, you know, and I don't know if that makes sense, if that's just me putting my sauce on it, but I feel like, you know, there's this realm in which, you know, depending on how you're delivering things or, you know, and how you're dressed as women, you know, um, it could either be taken as art or be taken as, you know, n something that doesn't have value because, you know, I, and it depends on who's, who's, who's viewing, who's gaze, but uh, I just think the way in which you use language has been super powerful and empowering to me. 
and the way you use words, um, I think uh, really has engaged me artistically that like I already told you, I'm, you know, working on creating work around your work. Um, so do you ever get any pushback uh, on the language? Do you ever have to, you know, keep people question you? Um, uh, can you edit this? Can you not use that word? Cause we're going to be live and, you know, Thank you. I'm telling you, your questions, listen, we your questions, you. you're, you're a journalist. What are you, a journalist too? You're a journalist. Let's <laughs> add it to the list, journalist. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Burt McPhee, journalist. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I've had pushback. I actually just recently. Oh, wow. Yeah, I am. Um, um, doing doing something and had a conversation about censorship and um, you know just um, asked from the gate you know before getting into the conversation about curating this particular event virtually I'm like listen censorship that's not going to be a problem right <laughs> you know and they're like okay cool yeah you know oh, well, I was like yeah just do a disclaimer do whatever you need I'm cool with disclaimer. Right. You know, all, all, all my first CDs had the parental advisory sticker on it. It ain't bother me none. You know, um, I'm cool with it. So I was like, what, what's the problem? We're all, we're adults. And if, if, and if you're an adult and you have a child, then you could decide, do I want my child to tune in on this? Um, and then you can make your decision. We all make decisions, you know? Uh, and then there was like, there was some surprising pushback that came wow. out like, all of a sudden. And I was like, wait. What? What's the problem? Oh, you know, we can't do, we don't want to do the disclaimer. It's going to be, because it's a lot, and it's what, and I'm like, wait, we're in 2020, right? We are, uh, we're living in a time of Corona, right? You heard what happened to Amal Arbery and um, George Floyd, right? And Breonna Taylor. And then, um, you know, so why, why are we, why are we taught, why are we like so adamant about censoring uh, free expression, um, especially creative, you know, like creative expression. And and there's a way they're like, come on, what are, look at what we're receiving every day in the news. Right. What? Right. What you want to talk about the words I'm using and, and and how you're like, you know, how they 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 shake you or you're shook. Good. That's the purpose, you know, to, to shake you. And this stuff that we're hearing every day that doesn't rattle your system, shouldn't that be censored? Right. Um, you know, and that's just free and clear to roam out there in the atmosphere and 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 and, and traumatize all of us. So right. Yeah. Right. And and do you change? Do, do you do you edit yourself? Uh I gotta think if I ever did that. I mean, you know, I'm just like. Or you just let it roll. I mean, the only time that I'll, the only time I can think of is like if I'm doing something specifically for children, ah. you know, or, or if I'm, or if I'm at a, a grade school, high schools, I always, add, I'll, I'm like, hey, can you send a thing home to the parent? What are we like? These are kids. <laughs> right. not playing with me. Right. Uh, you know, like what? I have four sons. You are not lying to me. Okay. Like I know. Right. What's right, you know on. what they listen to, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I know what's going on. They tell me some stuff, you know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's the only time I can think of. I've I've been uninvited. I've been um uninvited to places when they found out, like you know, someone maybe in the Black Studies program at a university was inviting me, and they were all excited. And then people did the research, and they're like, "Oh, hold on, wait a minute, Ursula Rucker." Well, we had heard that she um. Yeah, right. and it's like, listen, um, yeah, we can't. Um, one of them was the University of Alabama in Birmingham, which I will never forget. That I'm like, wow. what? Wow. Wait, I can't come. Wow. Wait, I can't come. And, and I, you know, I wonder if um, some of your male contemporaries have the same issues, um, because I know the roots like they stayed on college tours. That was like the bread and butter for years. Yeah for years performing at at colleges on college campuses and stuff. And so, you know, I think that, you know, that I'm sure does exist. Um, and, 
I, I, I wonder, you know, we, we look at poets and they tear apart books and everything, you know, and, and academic spaces. But the, the moment you come in there with that goddess spirit and like these fire words, then they're like, oh, hold on. She going to get people thinking. She going to get people lit. We got to slow this, slow this down. Because I've seen you perform and there's no way you are not moved by that. And, and uh, so, yeah, you, you got scared out here. You know what? What is so funny? That is, it's ridiculous to me sometimes when I think about it, because where I start, when I started, I was just, I mean, when I say I'm, I was painfully shy, I mean, man, I used to just like cry about how shy I was like, oh my God, I can't talk to people. I'm always worried about what everybody thinks. Uh, uh, or, or, you know, like, did I, did I speak to, I mean, wait, you know, I didn't want to think that somebody thought that I slighted them in any way, or, you know, I'm just always, you know, concerned with stuff like that in the beginning. So I can't believe I made it, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, I just can't believe that I like fought through all. So like, when we talk about the language, actually, I had to keep um, taking chances because that's what I was doing. I had to keep taking chances in spaces and just drop you know, whatever. It's, it wasn't just the language. It was also the, 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 what I was talking about with the language was also, you know, something that people wanted to censor was the idea. It was the story. Um, and so I had to really always push through and just like take a gulp and a breath and just, all right, earth, we're doing this, you know, and just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And, and, and until things like, and they, until they gelled and solidified and they did, you know, and now I can, yeah, it feels good. <laughs> Come on the other side, right? Lady, yeah, and, and, uh, Michelle, I wanted to let you know that uh, we finally have our brother waiting in the yes. ways to come in. Let's go, so, uh, Yeah. And I'll hold this question because we're going we gonna to Q&A after as well. So what up, Mark? The inner web and everything. Yeah. Hey, so it's, it's a pleasure listening to this conversation. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Absolutely. Oh, man. Come Thank on, you man. for being a part of it. You know, yeah. this is an honor. Um, I was telling, I went back a little bit. I said I was, we worked together in like 2004, I think it was, at the Painted Bride, me, you, and Crystal. We did. We did, right? Years, e eons ago, eons ago. A while ago, yes. Yes, yes. yes, <laughs> yes. Um, how are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing okay. You know, I'm here in Oakland, California, um, and I'm experiencing not just uh, geographic travel, but time travel and doing that thing. I'm, you know, I'm trying to, trying to work like a black woman, man. I'm just trying to. I know that's right. That's that's my aspiration. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> I know you know what I'm saying? Come on, like, Because they do it all, right? <laughs> the hurdles, the, the jobby job, the kids, the, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to be right. responsible politically. Yeah, yeah. Socially, creatively. Um, and a, a lot of that is a, uh, as you know, is a weight. Absolutely. A weight. So I'm managing the weight. Well, I hope you're finding some time for self care and mental health yes. in there as yes. well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't do enough of that. Right. Um, so, yeah, we were just, you know, digging in with a little bit with Ursula and, and chatting. Um, mm -hmm. I feel, you know, uh, you and Dwayne as well can, can, you know, ask questions because I will just keep digging in and because I got all the things I still want to know. Yeah. Um, I was going <laughs> to, have y'all ever worked together before? Yes. Yes. We just, we, I had the pleasure of working with both Mark and Daniel Bernard Romain recently on a work called uh, We Shall Not Be Moved. It was absolutely amazing. It featured countertenor John Holiday, um, Kirsten Chavez, uh, Lauren Whitehead. It was just absolutely amazing. And once again, to be able to work with Mark and to finally meet Daniel, because I had heard of him for many years. Um, but I, you know, that was a, 
I think that that was the first time I've ever worked with him, but the last time I saw him before that was when he had Rennie at Yerba Buena. And then the time before that was when he was at Painted Bride. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Mark, have you and Ursula worked together? No. Ursula's not going to remember. We, we we have not we have not formally worked together, but um, I used to run a club in San Francisco, oh. and I've I've uh, made sure could not um, you know do any kind of ode to the word and not have Ursula Rucker out. So, um, but we have not made a thing together. You know, Dwayne and I, you know, we made a thing together along with the choreographer Bill T. Jones and um, and, and many others. It was, it was great. Ursula and I have not made a thing together. I've just made sure she got paid. <laughs> I, can, I can see myself in that, in, that, in that space. I was in that space many times. I was in that space many times. So like, I could see that that was a, that was like my, that was like a home for me, you know? Mm -hmm. in San Francisco, you know, and uh, learnings. But yeah, we can, we can, we, we, we gonna make some. We, we have to, we have to, because the, you know, the truth is, is that I don't know what my, I didn't know that there was a thing as, um, you know, spoken word, spoken true. I just didn't know until I heard Ursula Rucker, you Stop. know. Don't say that. Don't say stuff like that. Don't play with my feelings. No, nah, but it's it's the truth. It's like there's a, you know, I I had the privilege of listening to the conversation for you know for several minutes, as you know, about 15, 20 minutes as I was in the backstage area. Um, you know, I I love Michelle, uh, your journalistic instincts and just how incisive you are with these questions and um, what you've opened up. And if I can just add my testimony, you know, there's a there's a lineage that I tend to follow from, um, let's say, the beat poetry movement in the you know in the 1950s, the 1960s. Amiri Baraka as kind of like the bridge between the beat poetry movement and the Black Arts movement, and obviously, you know, Nikki Giovanni, Sonia Sanchez that particular lineage that extends to Gil Scott Heron and the last poets extending into, you know, hip hop culture, extending into, um, you know, Saul Williams, who for me was a crossroads figure, um, truly. But the, the same year that I met Saul Williams, I heard Ursula Rucker, mm. you know, for the first time. And, um, and my first exposure to you was on a Roots album. So as someone who was politicized in hip hop, whose political awakening was in hip hop, but honestly, who's, um, that political awakening was generally served to me by male voices on a, a kind of cadence or, or, or rhythmic measure that was um, not, not restrictive, but rigid. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so here was this artist, here is this strong woman, like just falling out of the sky at the end of a Roots album that, you know, and that intersection of, you know, femininity, Black woman power, Black politics, sexuality, perverse sexuality, all, you know, all at once. I was like, oh, okay, that can happen too. So, mm. yeah, so definitely part of my general awakening, and I imagine um, an awakening for so many other artists. And that kind of confluence of, um, of various agendas really being braided together like DNA strands, that's something that unfortunately is still rare, but it's, it's something that you see in the first wave program at University of Wisconsin, for instance, like that is how we're asking artists to show up. Um, and I guess my question, if, if if I might extend a question to to you, Ursula, is was there ever a choice for you? Was there ever 
any doubt about this braiding of your politics, your aesthetics, gender, the performance of gender? Wow, that was like an emotional question for me. Yeah. That beautiful question. And I just, oh, it's just like, it's just, it's just a wave of emotions. Mm. Did she just, did she go? Yeah. I don't know. Something, yeah, I don't know. Something no. happened. It was too much. It's too much, Mark. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> what happened? I don't know. It was that much. <laughs> right, exactly. The universe is what? Okay, oh. okay. All right, Mark. <laughs> Come in here moving planets and, and stars around. <laughs> um, thank you for that question. Mm. No, nah, it wasn't really a choice, was it? Ah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't really a choice, was it? It was like, mm. Ursula, listen, you've been having headaches, right? Mm. It's probably because you're not writing and you're not, you're not speaking. You know, you're not like, uh, what does Mama Sonia say? She said um, something about me tasting my own blood. You know, mm. um, I wasn't tasting my own blood. I, I didn't think I was ready. I was scared. Mm. I was always scared to venture out there and see what I was about and what I wanted to do and how mm -hmm. I was going to do it. And, um, and, and, and then like, I just, I don't know. You, you just feel like you just put in the right places. And I mean, we have free will, so we have to make some choices in there. But I think um, there was a lot of divine work along my path, so much so that, Mark, that when people ask me sometimes, hey, what is your advice for those that want to get into what you, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Open up to your divine path and mm -hmm. act accordingly. <laughs> you know, because that's, that's pretty much, I mean, yeah, I had to keep, like we were like we were talking earlier i had to decide to be free with my voice when i when i decided i wasn't going to censor myself anymore um in my work mm -hmm. I, I did have to make that decision and that choice to um take that part of the journey and i'm so glad i took that part of the journey because man that has just that that just grows my life exponentially just knowing that i am not afraid to to say a certain thing or express a certain thing or talk about a certain thing, you know, as mm. long as I'm telling some kind of truth and I'm not, you know, just straight up dissing uh, someone, you know, with malice. Well, you know, I'm saying sometimes we do that though, you know, <laughs> um, but you know what I mean for the most part, but yeah. How about, I mean, how about for you, you know, was it a choice? I think it was, um, I, I think at first, like if, if I'm, if I just kind of trace again, my political awakening and my literary awakening, the, there was, there was Boogie Down Productions, there was Public Enemy, there was Sonia Sanchez, or really the three, if I think about like, you know, and if, if I think about like where my politics were, and then there was just a, a world of um, of hip hop and hip hop culture that made reference to the political world. I grew up in New York City and, you know, I wonder about the matter of black life. Like if, if I were to take the, the movement for black lives and transpose it in time 30 years to yeah. the early 90s or the you know the mid 80s, the, the early 90s, I, I remember, um, you know, Tawana Brawley, let alone Yousef Hawkins, you know what I mean? Before I knew Louima, like there was a whole, um, so like, I remember the feeling of watching Do the Right Thing 
and how close that felt. And so the art was always the way, you know what I mean? Art was always the way. Um, and then there was a, a, a beautiful relationship to language that I think I, you know, really first encountered, like when I first really was like, yo, this is beautiful language, it was Zora Neale Hurston. Mm. And so there was, there, there was the folkloric aspect as well. So I guess maybe there was like a, there was a choice to be a fiction writer. There was a choice to, I, you know, I remember reading for Colored Girls and I remember how emotional that was for me. I remember reading um, Temple of My Familiar and how emotional that was for me. Um, so so there were there were writers and generally they were women that, um, and, and I guess there was a choice to be like a fiction writer. You know, there was a choice to, to land the structure and the form and the modality in a space where I could explore a politic the way that a Toni Morrison explores a politic, which is not overt. But the music that was in my headphones was overt. The poetry that was in my right. headphones was very clear. Mm. So when I thought of myself as a poet, it was the Etheridge Knight, it was the Amiri Baraka, it was, mm. you know, it was the KRS, it was. Can I tell you when I worked at the Painted Bride um, and I don't know how I missed your things at the Painted Bride. Like I, I must've been having babies, you know, I must've been having babies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having babies or something. Um, but yeah, I just remember the first time because you had the piece that you did about being a father mm -hmm. um, and everyone was just all a buzz. They were like, I feel about Mark Ramuti Joseph. Mark Ramuti Joseph. Have you? And then from that point on through out my life up until that time we first met in Philly, which is significant. Yeah. Like, yes, we, like I, we met, met, like we met. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, I'm paying attention. I'm a wiser now. I'm I'm not uh, all like a deer caught in headlights. Cause back then I was kind of like a deer caught in headlights. I was just like, what am I doing? You know? mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just all that time. I'm like, oh, I gotta meet him. I gotta meet him. Oh, everybody's always talking. I've heard this. We know each other. Like, you know, all the same beings and work with all of the same amazing beings. And uh, yeah, you know, I just think this is such a, such a look at us again, Dwayne and <laughs> Michelle, we were saying this, like just from us being together in Philly, but like me with you and just kind of looking up to you and learning about you and just being so excited about finally meeting you and mm. and now we're doing this i like you know don't take that for granted at all i'm super grateful um mm. and it also you know what mark it also is a confirmation right i've, yeah. I, I've been doing the right things i've been doing the right things i've been making the right moves it's been it's been rough it's been a struggle mm. Mm. It's been a challenge and uh, you're not quite sure when you're raising children and you choose to live this art life and, and the money mm -hmm. ain't coming and you're making sacrifices and compromises and you know everybody's looking at you side-eyed and and, and and sideways and, and speaking in hushed tones like don't you think Ursula should get a lot a real job <laughs> you know like that kind of stuff which I'm sure my my friends and family and all kinds of people have said but this right here at this moment word yeah for sure for sure I wanted to um, to revisit something that you said, uh, Ursula. Well, it was a question that Mark posed to you in reference to you having a choice. And it made me think of um, something that was introduced to me by an artist, Jennifer Harge, recently, and uh, a phrase by Leslie Gum, uh, ancestral assignments. And how in that within those assignments, you know, we have our elders directly speaking to us. And Mark, I wanted to kind of turn that back on to you. Like, when was that moment? When when did you have that confirmation of like, okay, I know that I'm feeling this, but when you had the confirmation from elders to be like, okay, 
you have to move into this space and claim this space. When was that for you? Um, I, honestly, I've I've relied a lot on serendipity. <laughs> you know, like um, my aunt. In a lot of ways, I, I walk blindfolded. And I, my ancestors just kind of steering me towards the pinata, <laughs> go, go smash. Um, but what Ursula is saying about the confirmation, I, I would say there's, you know, for me, it's a little less about assignment and a little more about um, clarity that comes from just really hard to miss confirmation of a particular truth or set of truths. Um, I mean, I literally, so I went to Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was having a really good time. My senior, my senior year, dog, I was having a really <laughs> good time. I was 21 and thought I was cute and shit, and I, you know, and I looked up and I was like, oh, I'm going to graduate next month. Like, what am I? So, what happens now? And I thought, mm -hmm. you know, I was throwing parties and I had a hella cheap rent. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to throw parties and write the great American novel and just kick it until I, you know, figure something out. And <laughs> I, and I uh, <laughs> turned the corner happened to me so many times at the Atlanta University Center, I turned the corner and I ran into the person that I was supposed to run into. Mm -hmm. And that person was like, I said, what you doing here? And that person said, I'm looking for you. Mm -hmm. I actually was looking for you. Long story short, that's how I ended up in the Bay. Um, that's how, you know, I met the, the groups of people that have and, you know, my son now is a freshman at Howard and as part of his, uh, as part of his uh, English class, he just wrote an essay or he's writing an essay on Saul Williams hmm. on the, on the oh, poem on the plaque. I said, man, if it wasn't for that poem, you wouldn't be here, you know? And I had just had to write. So there's a, there's a lot of that. I think so. Yeah. I think for some of us, we are intentional. We have our mood board, we have our vision board, we have our five year plan. We have, you, you know, what I mean, some of us are, are like that. Um, I, I, I know the moment. I can, I can feel that idea of assignment in the moment. It's like, okay, cool, everything is right here. I can feel that. More often than not, I don't know that it's happened until after. At least that's how it was when I was younger. Now I'm like, oh yeah, boom, I just ran into her and this is what's gonna happen. You know, now it's just like boom, boom. Now it's just right. it's the, the, the longer you live, you you see it happening from further away. Mm -hmm. That is literally perspective. You just see it happening from further away. That's all. So, so I want I wanted to say, uh, and I wanted to say it was Alexis Gum that who that was, but in reference to um, that time when it, you had that confirmation about your purpose, can you also talk about how, or or can you give advice to other young people out there who are coming into finding that that purpose and how they can get out of their way in order for that to actually um feed their direction and how they're moving forward and how to kind of make sense of things i mean i i would definitely pass it pass that question to michelle or to ursula what i what i could just maybe offer is um mind your ego mm -hmm. you know because um there are things you think you should you should do because you because you think you should do them and then there, there are things that you should do because you should do them. 
<laughs> that's so like existentialist zen. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I get it. Mm -hmm. And the difference really, Dwayne, is listening. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you, you, you cannot, Lord knows. And if this year, if this calendar year has taught anybody anything, it's to shut the fuck up. Get out the way. Pivot <laughs> is the word in 2020. Right. right. I, love it. You, I mean, today. Right. We was right. all cool. It was great. It was I was on the and then, then all of a sudden I couldn't hear. Right. I couldn't hear y'all. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like all right. None of us like none of us really tripped. It was like okay. We'll, we'll do A, B, C, and D. Right. Right. You know. So, Michelle, how about you? I mean, you know, don't, I, I don't I don't like to give out advice either, you know, because I also believe like I don't want to direct anyone on their path. You know, I, I can give assistance. I can give tools. You know, I can if you come to me with questions, I can help, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of, you know, I, I would, you know, fall back to what Ursula said, you know, just be open to receive and, and mm -hmm. listen to the divine. And and you'll find your path. And this and this, you know, I, I love that you vocalize this idea of like, you know, because everybody wants to know how you do how did you do all these things, right? And I was like, I just went where the directions carried me, right? Um, there was no straight path. I can't tell you. I've I've been in spaces doing stuff that I shouldn't have done for a very long time, and I'm still doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Tonight. Um, I'm on here with all these amazing artists and dope, dope, dope people, but um, I, I didn't, no one gave me a blueprint, you know? Yeah. Um, I just, I listened to myself. I, I had to continue to get to know myself and know what I wanted to do and what my purpose was. Mm. Um, and, and like you said, I do, I do listen when, you know, um, when folks is talking to me, you know, yes. uh, I, I, I still defer to my mom at, I'm not going to tell you my age, but at my age, I still, you know, know that person is still uh, a powerful to, to, to me and what she, you know, what she thinks about, Hey, I have this opportunity to do this. What do you think? You know? And so I reach back to those people, I respect the family. Um, I don't, I tend to like keep things quiet that I'm doing, you know? Um, so, so I do do a lot. It's very introspective, like whatever I'm doing or whatever I'm trying to achieve, you know, almost to the point where it's a detriment. I have to learn how to ask for help and support and, and, and assistance, you know. And so that's my that's where I need, you know, work around that part of it. But yeah, I don't I don't have no great no no great nuggets of wisdom to leave folks with. You know, you got to get to know yourself and and, yes. and 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 believe in yourself, you know, and yes. mind your ego. Like, yo, I'm about to put that on every computer screen and everything. That's the biggest thing, man. It's the mm -hmm. biggest thing. You know, I think it's one of the biggest things that uh, uh, keep people from being the greatest self. It really mm -hmm. is. It's that ego. Yeah. You know? Okay. So. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if this is a great time because I, I could talk forever, but all right, I have one more question though before we before we jump on. For both of you, Mark and Ursula, um, Ursula, is out of all the projects that you've worked on, your own work um, included, what, what is one of your favorites? Because you know my favorite album of yours. She said. That joint is fire. Thank you. I love it. It's my favorite album. Bless up. Bless up. Thank you for that question. Yeah, that's hard, right, Mark? It's hard to answer that kind of question. Huh. Mm -hmm. You know, we're 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 blessed to have done a few things. So <clears throat> you know for collaborations, a favorite project. It doesn't yeah. even have to be like you know, I have so many. Ah, so is it just, mm -hmm. are, are we talking favorite album, favorite pro I mean let's whatever you want to share. Let's Virgo it. Let's. Okay. Uh, favorite album. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, they all have a special place, but I would have to say, my aunt mama really um, is is kind of like a special. That's my third album, and uh, they're all special. You know, Super Sisters, my first. That's my baby. Uh, she said that was my last one, so. Been a while, 2011, since I've done a solo album. I'm I'm tripping, 
Um, <laughs> hey, we're on that divine time thing again. I can't, you know, we, we just can't push it and rush it. It, it. it will happen as it should. But yeah, my op mama, uh, you know, I had four children by then and um, I was separated from their father and I was super depressed and trying to figure out what was I going to do with four sons and yeah. And, you know, the youngest was a baby and I was still nursing and I, I don't even remember the like, oh, I was still on K7. So that was my last album on a label. And so it was significant for that as well. Um, so I did it big. I'm like, yo, everything is exploding and falling apart. You know, I think I'll call it my op mama because like everything's in chaos and I need to bring some balance to this shit right now. So that's who I want to be. I want to be my op mama because like, I don't feel like my op mama at all. Mm. And mm. I did it and it worked. It was so crazy. I brought my, brought my sons to the studio. They would act a fool up in there. They mm. were falling out. I have to. You know, they were kicking people in there and causing all kinds of rocket. <laughs> you know, and, and then I had the baby and I would I would bring my youngest sage and just lay him out, take the cushions off the leather couch and my homie Aunt Tid, Anthony Tid's uh mm -hmm. studio who who executive produced the album and just uh do it, find some childcare. I don't know how I did that. It was the album was exactly what was happening like it was like so that's why i love it so much i because i did that shit yo i didn't think I, I, it, I could do it and i and i pulled it out the bag and i love that album and i love it for that you know dope dope what about you mark lots of projects since you were super super young yeah um yes I, I think the I think the project also came around two thousand probably two thousand eleven. Um, well, I'll I'll say two things. There was there was a a poem that I'm there was a a theater piece that I made that was the result of a festival that I co-founded. Uh, the festival that I co-founded with Shanaka Hodge, with uh, Hadari Davis, with Joan Osado, with uh, Jason Mateo, uh, Brett Cook, and others, uh, was a festival called Life is Living, which was an environmental festival that we did in West Oakland, really focused on affirmations of life in the Black community, mm -hmm. thinking about, um, just thinking about green and the idea of environmental consciousness a little differently. Um, thinking about like the socio-political environment as a filter through which we might um, best consider the, the global envir environment, the physical environment. And as a result of this festival, which we later did in Chicago and New York um, um, and, uh, and, and Houston, in Third Ward in Houston, um, we premiered this piece called Red, Black, and Green, a blues. When we did it in Philly, we did it at the Annenberg. Um, but it's, it's a piece that uh, we were able to tour all over the country, uh, collaboration with the Astor Gates, with uh, Tracy Tomer, uh, Tommy Shepard, uh, later my man, Yao Ajiman, directed by um, my man, Michael Garces. Um, yeah, red, black, and green, a blues. It, it I, I have to say, it's probably my favorite like piece of art that I made. Mm -hmm. But the, but I think maybe my favorite thing that I had a hand in making was the Brave New Voices Festival. Was the Brave New Voices Youth Poetry Festival, and I, I remember specifically there was a moment in two thousand eight. This is a couple of months before we elected Obama. There was this feeling in the air that the shit might happen. And um, there was a, a young poet from New York. Her name was Brittany Wilson. She was on crutches. Mm. 
and crutches because um, she hadn't broken something. There was, uh, you know, this was just her her conditioning, and um, there was a particular um, malady that um, that informed her walk, but not her pen. And earlier in the week, you know, of this week long festival, which by this point was being like documented by Russell Simmons and HBO and, you know, was a was a whole thing. Um, I taught this workshop that was that asked the poets in the room to to move while they spoke, which was kind of like my thing. Yeah. And Brittany wasn't fully able to participate. And I profiled her, I remember, mm -hmm. as an educator. Like, I, I, I profiled her and honestly dismissed her access to the educational experience. Mm. And... Uh, at the finale of that of that year, she performed this poem that took me down and anybody else that thought or behaved like me. It wasn't written for me. It wasn't written at me. It just was written at me and for me. You know what I mean? All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's like honest. Like there's so there's the thing that you make, and then there's the space that you make. And the space that you make, like Dwayne, here it goes, confirmation, right? It's like, oh, if I, if it, it was an occasion to listen mm -hmm. based on space that had been made, based on an environment that had been created. That's the thing that I miss about live shows is like there's an environment that gets made that's a little different than the experience that we're having right now. So um, that, that's what I would say. It's, it's important, I think, as creators that we, we just don't think about our books. Like we think about our books, we think about our albums, we think about our plays, our dances. We think about this work for the stage, but we also think about every workshop as a project. We think about every curriculum, you know, as a project, the spaces that we make. And B&B and is my favorite. Before before we continue, real short, just to say, you know, just to just say one thing, Mark, you know, um, you are definitely in my mind an inspiration for me when I began to uh, go into writing my my first uh, one woman show, you know, for mm. Latin Americans or my live epic poem, as I called it. Um, Word. You know, uh, it was very, it was frightening, you know, mm, to... Yeah. Yeah, it was frightening to just dive in and tell my own story, like all of it, just put it all out there and hang it on the line, all dirty and everything. Yeah. And for everybody, that was scary. But it was scary to foray into into an area that I wasn't accustomed to, you know, um, to being in with my work and having to pivot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. having to pivot and, and, and learn something and, t and, and I and I kept you in my mind you know like oh you know like look what Mark Mamuti Joseph does you know and I definitely you were one of the like it was just a few and I was just holding so like we, we never know who's thinking about us right real talk. <laughs> dope, dope. And real talk I got a quick question since I'm the only person on here that unfortunately doesn't have any children. How has becoming a parent shifted your focus as an artist? Um, you know, has it made you more present? Has it made you focus on, you know, how and what you're doing? I'm, I'm interested. Yes. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and please elaborate. Please I'm let Mama Ursula answer that. Woo! That's a whole. That's a whole. Um, book me on a whole another hour. <laughs> uh, just to talk about this one raising four sons and four black sons in America, raising four black sons in a city called Philadelphia. Um, that is, you know, different, right? Um. We're so amazing 
and beautiful, so much history and sacred and, and ancient. And then we grittier than a mug. Woo, cha. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, so like just rate. Okay, so there's that part, right? And, and then you're an artist. Yo, oh wait, hold on. Oh, you want to be an activist now too? Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. much. <laughs> you know, so it's been. Whew, I just can't even. I really would need more time. You know, but uh, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. It's been. You know, like me, Michelle and I talked about this last night. Um, you know, leaving, we going away on tour, leaving the kids, you know, uh, or just trying to just juggle, make a living, um, teach them the right things, you know, while we out here just doing this rock star thing we're doing and don't even know we're rock stars, you know. Everybody, you know, you have to like, that has to be part of your confidence. It's not even narcissistic. You get to a certain level with yourself and you, you have to have a, a certain level of confidence where you can say, yeah, hell yeah, I'm a rock star. What? I raised these babies with no money sometimes and stuff getting cut off and trying to figure out ways and still you know, making sure everybody ate and, and, <laughs> and introduce them to the flyest people and have them in the most amazing spaces and experience, you know, for them to have a nice, juicy, you know, solid foundation to 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 choose all kinds of different options from, you know. Um, so yeah, I think I, I think yeah, I did it, I did a good job, but that job was hard as shit. And I'm still doing it. That's my answer. Right, right. Uh, um, I can jump in. I mean, you know, really short. I think Mark and my, my son is a sophomore in college. So our, our kids are around the same age. I never really realized that. But um, mm -hmm. I think early on was really tough um, because what became very quickly apparent to me that there was no question that I was the one that always would sacrifice. Um, and, you know, in, in and not in a way that it was ever said um, it's just understood. It's an it's a um, unspoken thing, um, and it you know it, even the women around me is like, girl, you still doing that hip hop stuff? Ain't you a mom? Ain't you a you know you still doing that stuff? You still dancing? You still doing that break dancing? You know? Um, I feel like it 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 was. I I had to search for the space for us to share the space um, because you know, other people's expectations were him or me. I mean, I danced while I was pregnant, you know, so I danced the whole time. I was breaking and everything, floor work. And uh, and so he, you know, he lived that life. My mom called him my back because he was always with me, you know, at every event, at every rehearsal. Um, but I, I felt like the pressure from outside of, of my world, like, you know, just general population or when I was in corporate jobs, people I work with, like, you know, because I still live these two very, like, simultaneously, like, t totally different lives. So I live this artistic life, and I very often had a full-time job, plus being a mom, plus running the company. And that was my life for many years, for until, you know, recently when I've stepped back and have come back into the nonprofit and arts world. Um, and so now it's a totally different kind of thing. You know, we can sit down and talk and uh, about culture and, and dance and, you know, he's looking at Instagram and looking at dancers on Instagram and want my advice and what I think. And he's telling me what he thinks. So, I mean, I know I did the right thing. You know, I know I made the right choices, but you know, it was, I had, it was hard to like find myself, um, in, in, as an artist in being a mother. Cause I, you know, I wanted to be a very involved mother. And then, like I said, you know, we've been in, in this, music hip hop world forever, you know? So at the time that I had a kid, you know, the Roots were on tour. I mean, they were the Grateful Dead of hip hop is what they were called, you know, three, four months out of the time, you know, the, the you know, majority of the pregnancy, like, you know, came home, had baby, then it's like, oh, we gotta hit the road. You know, those guys stayed on the road, you know? So it, it was without, like I said, without even being discussed, it was no question that, that I was the one to, kind of make the sacrifice and, and be the uh, the parent that that did, you know, carry the heavy load, you know? And so just trying to balance that and figure that out. And now 19 years later, 
and uh, and then it's the exact opposite. They don't need you anymore. So it's just like now, now you got to figure that out. But you just have more time uh, for you and more time to focus on your art. And so that's where I am now. Yeah, yeah, Michelle. Yeah, that's that's so real. So and and Dwayne, sometimes they sometimes when they get older, without telling us that we had a real influence, and they love you know, what we do, what we do and how we do it, they start doing it. That part. Yeah. I, I, have, I have two, I have just one more question, but it has three words and yeah. it's for all three of y'all wait till Mark gets on. Um, and uh, Ursula, you were kind of talking about this already, but I just want to say three words to you all. And I just want to hear what your response is. And this is my last question. Um, artivism, community, uh, the black female body and intellectual property. What comes to mind? I would say just me. I'm right here. That's it. <laughs> I mean, what more do you need to say? <laughs> and scene. Period. <laughs> With all the teeth. Period. I want to know what that what that means. Michelle's already let us know what it means to her. But when the when those words are said, because I mean, there's we've talked about every aspect of that of each one of those words within this discussion. But I just would like to hear individually how that how those words resonate with you. Community, uh, artivism, intellectual property, and the black female body. And I also want to say this too to Mark, being men in this culture and you know, hearing you express when you first got on here, like I'm working like a black woman, you know, being able to have this space and commune and fellowship as a full family is huge to me. So I just wanted to revisit that so that we could just make some clarifications because we have family in the room and equal representation of family in the room. And I was just wondering. Um. I think that um, man, it's there's just there's just so much here. I, I feel maybe a little like Ursula did um, uh, earlier in the conversation because it is deeply emotional. Um, I just know that, well, here, I'll put it like this. I, I didn't understand that I had privilege until like last year. Mm. Like I, and maybe not like last year, but it, it, I didn't grow up thinking that I had privilege and didn't think, didn't think of myself of having um, privilege as a straight person, as a male person, eventually as a, as an educated person. I I recognized the power struggle, um, the the cultural power struggle that I had as a person of African descent in this country, and the feeling of being hunted. Mm. And wow. my, my general response to my own personhood was, was the knowledge that I was being hunted, including being hunted by people that look like me. Indeed. Like, you know, I, I'm from an era, I remember the poet, you know, Reggie Gaines, and, you know, he had this poem about Jordans, and Michael Jordan was iconic when I was growing up, and the thing of having Jordans could get you shot. And I remember yeah. how scared my, you know, first of all, you, you know, all that money paid for some shoes, but also, like, the shoes made you a target. And so I was very, very conscious of that part of my reality, I, I negated by conditioning and by psychology the aspect of my identity that enjoyed privilege of all sorts. Mm. And it wasn't until much, much later, probably not until my 20s, maybe even my early 30s, where 
I became more acutely aware of the exercise of my male identity, of my gender, of my sexual preference as privileges, mm -hmm. and also instruments of power. Mm -hmm. So when I hear the word artivism, when I hear the word community, you know, when I, when I hear these words, you know, the echo for me is what um, I described earlier. It's not just the thing that you make, it's the space that you make. And in the space that you make, it's, you know, the, the, the way that we perform allyship best, I think, is to cultivate spaces of shared risk, shared stakes, shared accountability. Ooh. And Hmm. Um, you know, as we are in a political season, you know, who, who has saved, if you're politically left of center, who has saved this country more than black women? You think about your, you know, your family, you know, like, you know, this, this is not to negate the contribution of brothers everywhere. But who, let's say, eight and a half times out of ten to be generous, who's holding it down? You, you know, who is, um, you know, so from the family structure to the very democratic, you know, to, to the democratic party, you know, and now to our democracy, like who holds it down? You know, they, they say something like Trump has an 87% disapproval rating um, in the black community. It would be 97% disapprove if it wasn't for brothers. Who is holding down our democracy? Who is holding down our families? And what do we reveal in our art, in our art spaces that makes that very clear? So I think it's important to articulate love for black women, you know, to to articulate the contributions of black women, to make sure that you articulate a, the creative lineage, you know, of black women. Ta-Nehisi Coates says, you know, even white people know this shit because Aretha is who they hear as they lay dying. You know, we, we, we know we know who the soul of this country is. We know who the soul of our people is. And we fight in order to affirm that reality. So those are some of the things I think about. Thank wow. You. That's amazing. Shared states, shared risk, shared accountability. Yes, ma'am. Love it. I love it. I love it. I'm not. I'm not gonna. You know, we because because like we could go on forever. I'm just gonna say this that uh, for some reason intellectual property is what stood out to me most when you said all those things. Like I was like, okay, I'm just going. You know, like I know in the interest of time, I'm just gonna choose the one that resonated with me the most, just like energetically, and um, I I just feel like intellectual property. Um, for me, it's like all, all inclusive of all of those things. Like the way that I look at it, you know, it's like I use it a lot. So when you said it, it's just like my sensors went off because um, it's such a big thing for me all the time. Because I always say this, I always say, um, uh, you know, sometimes my poems are all I have. Mm. Sometimes my poems are all I have. So. You know, if that's what my intellectual property is, you know, then um, yeah, that's like, whew, that's 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 my superpower right there. You know what I mean? That's one of my superpowers. So I want, I need to take care of that. And if you're not taking care of it, then I'm gonna check your ass. Mm. Um, and just like yeah, the community, artivism, black female body, all of these things go into my writing. And so it's all the time, it's always in my writing. That's always all incorporated in my writing so it's all the intellectual property is all um 
all connected. All the sinew is everything is working together. You know. I love y'all. Go ahead, Miss Bird. Ms. <laughs> I want to thank y'all so much for this conversation. I could go on forever. Um, I, I thank you for your patience. I know you know we kind of put this together. I mean, we just got on and did the thing, right? Because yeah. all of our schedules are all over the place, and you know, I kind of been deep in the fellowship. We we have really started bringing the guest artists, doing an event every night. So yesterday I had three events. It, it's just been nuts. So. Um, so, you know, I want to I want to open it up if either of y'all feel like, you know, blessing us with a little bit of language. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, no pressure, but uh, if either one of you want to share, I would we would love to have it. And I'm going to put myself on mute while y'all, you know, do that. Well, I want I wanted to ask Michelle or Dwayne, is there any particular poem of mine? I don't want to put you on the spot. You know, because sometimes I would hate, I would hate that shit at poetry reading sometimes, Marvel. Which one of my blah 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 blah? You know, and I was always like too shy. I'm like, these people don't know my I'm not gonna get up there and say that shit. What? <laughs> There's no way. But um, yeah, just just in case there was some kind of you know, like theme or something you were wanting or needing. I, I don't have anything in particular, no theme. Um you know, I, I just love the voice. Um, if, if you have, I can't even think of off the top of my head right now, but um, anything speaking to maybe this climate, you know, I know you just did something. Um, well, since you, since you said she said, said or she said anything from she said. Well, yeah. So I, I think um, Mook is on she said, right? Mook. Yeah. Mook. This is for. Mook and all of them, all of them, curbside soldier, all of them, hardcore hustlers, all of them, wanna be gangster, yeah, all of them, this is for Mook and all of them. All of them mamas waiting, worrying in windows, and all of them mamas stand inside coffins too soon. All of them, eh, this is for move, and all of them, this is for move, and all of them. All of them, all of them, and this is for, and this is for, and this is for Mumia, the man, shining star in a dark sky of disenfranchised, nothing but niggas, isolated, dimmed down demonized, scapegoated, made a status quo casualty. And this is for, and this is for, and this is for, and this is for all children of God. And this is for, and this is for freedom. And this is for justice. And this is for truth. And this is for, my sons and their safety. And this is for just one love. Just one love. Just one love. This is for Mook and all of them, all of them. Curbside soldiers and all of them. Hardcore hustlers, all of them. Wanna be gangsters, eh, all of them, eh, all those mamas waiting, worrying in windows, eh, all them mamas stand inside coffins too soon, eh, all of them, eh, all of them, eh, all of them, eh. Woo! Hmm. Ah, you know, that's where... 
for Walter Wallace Jr. and his mama and his mama and his family and his mama who had to watch him get gunned down in the street in the daytime and on video and, and, and after begging and pleading for the police not to do it. And, she, and they still did it and she called them for help. And she called them for help mm. with the son who was hurt and suffering because you know, we, we hurt and suffering in these minds. So many of us are hurt and suffering in these minds and, and, and Walter Wallace Jr. was hurting and suffering and she called for help. And so this is for Mook and all of them, and Walter Wallace Jr. and all of them and their mamas and their people in any way. Um, so uh, let me do love, you know, to kind of like, that's what we do, right? We slice and dice and then we hug, you know? <laughs> so um, let me do love because love is why I do everything. It's why I'm here. It's why I, when I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh no, not Groundhog Day again. You know, <laughs> you know, it's love, some kind of love or some kind of desire or quest or journey. I don't know. It's just always about love for me. So anyway, on this day, there will be no talk of war or politics or disaster or death. Love is alive today. Love is still alive today. So we will speak only of love. Mm. There will be only love on tongue and lip and in heart and thought. And it won't be that Hollywood type of love, not TV love, not dime store novel love, and certainly not, absolutely not mainstream music or social media love, 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 you know, love. Love that has been worked on like gardens and term papers. Love that has been nurtured like children. Mm. Love that has been nurtured like children and well, like children. Love that falls, crashes even, burns, but dusts off, fixes up and rises, rises more brilliant than before. Phoenix love, yes, Phoenix love. So let us speak only of love, healing love, no herbal or over the counter love, real healing love, like God's love, like your mama's love, like best friend love, like change the world love, like lovers love, like human love, humans love, love soft, love hard, but just love. Enjoy this new garden, work on it together and it will be beautiful. It will grow from year to year, it will be perennial. It will win blue ribbons and everything. And folks will come from far and wide just to see it and wish they had it, had this kind of garden, this kind of. Enjoy this new garden. Work on it together. And it's going to be so beautiful. It's going to grow from year to year. It's going to be perennial. It's going to win blue ribbons and everything. And folks are going to come from far and wide just to see it. I promise you, they're going to come from far and wide just to see it. And they're going to wish they had it, had this kind of garden, this kind of had this kind of garden, this kind of, had this kind of garden, this kind of love. Had this kind of garden, this kind of love. Had this kind of garden, this kind of love. 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 Love.
Wow. Thank you for letting me do that. Oh, I haven't done MOOC in us. Oh, MOOC. Oh, thank you. I just, oh, my heart is hurting right now. Um, our hearts are hurting a lot right now, right? And um, we're allowed to talk about it. We're allowed to, to share. We're allowed to cry about it in public on Zoom meetings and, and virtual gigs and whatnot if we want to, right, Mark? Yes. You know? Yeah, we're allowed to do that. I want to let you know. Um, you know, our ancestors say, yeah, you, you're allowed to do that, you know? We we did all that stuff so you could you you could feel free to express and and say how you feel and not have to feel ashamed. Um, and this communal conversation and gathering this evening, I cannot tell you I would break down in tears if I really went deep into telling you how much this means to me um, right now. You know when we feel like we can't get up and do anything we can't show up and we still show up and then when we show up we get something like this this beautiful you know like the brother said in the beginning we first before we went you know like live live and he was like oh i love to see it i love to see the beautiful black or brown face you know what i mean like i love to see it i was telling you mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. i love to see it too and i love to feel it I love to be all up in it, you know, and just building it together. We're building this together. We're doing this together. Mark, thank you for all the work you do, you know, for the people um, continuously, courageously, unflinchingly, uh, such an inspiration. And uh, Michelle, you already know, you know, what you do. Uh, for, for, for us, for black women, for sisters, for women in general, for women in hip hop, for mamas. Um, and that, but you put us all to shame looking, looking like, you know, super, super woman out here doing all the things. Yeah, tone it down a little bit. <laughs> you don't gotta do everything. Uh -huh. Just trying to keep up. You don't gotta do now. everything. You know, no, I, just, I love it. No, I love it. I love that you do I everything. Love you, lady. It, you know, I love it, you. it helps. It helps us, you know, when we see you doing it, we can. Push and Dwayne, I was just, I was just like imagining you at the Painted Bride, you know, just seeing you at the Painted Bride, you know, coming in or dance with Rennie or just like, oh my God, look at you, he all, he all doctor, Holly, professor, <laughs> or whatever that, you I know? I'll claim it. We can speak it right yeah, on it. Of course, sure. You there know, you go. Like, here we are. It's a beautiful thing. I thank what? you. And thank everybody who gathered in here, who joined us sure. and, yeah. and, and caught the good vibes and the energy, you know, that we're trying to can't stop, won't stop. Let's swing these forward, yo. Word. So I wanted, I wanted to also say, and, and Michelle, just before you close out, um, just to let you know, I know that both of you are um, traveling around the world, but I, as I've been saying to Michelle and also been saying to Chris, in reference to the work that you did establish here, Mark, understand that you know we come from a community that, you know, transgenerational um, intellectual property and power is is how we continue to grow. And I want to say that it doesn't matter where either one of you all are in, in this in this world. Know that what you have established in 07 and how mm. we are visiting that now is because we are gathering the troops. Mm because now as we come into this space and into, into the academy we, into the academy we must remind everyone that it is the community that mm. continues to build this into this embodied intellectual property let me let me mm. correct you. because in this space it is a space of theory and how people can create distance mm. from mm. that generates what gathers mm. And I have to help mm -hmm. you let you both understand that when I had the opportunity to finally work with this amazing woman and we talked mm -hmm. about what we wanted to do and how this, you know, we knew this is, we know this is bigger than us. Mm -hmm. but we know mm -hmm. that, there are, that there are gods and goddesses out there that have been doing the work and we just need to be able to acknowledge that and mm -hmm. 
understanding that we're moving forward with context, content, and citation in reference to this Black American continuum and understand mm -hmm. that you all are major facets of that. So as mm -hmm. we move forward and solidify this, you are a part of however you want to add and bless us with whatever it is, because mm -hmm. we're building this degree. Word. We're building this and it's interdisciplinary, which is the reason why we have this goddess here, uh, Michelle Birdmix B. Mm -hmm. It's through her, her course that we are revealing the power of interdisciplinarity. Mm -hmm. And we, we really just love and appreciate the both of you so much and know that wherever you are in the world, you are loved on. I say. Dwayne, I love you, brother. Thank you so much. That's so beautiful content, context, and citation. Well, I should have been taking notes. I'm in class. The whole time, the whole time. Listen, listen, listen. Like I got said, y'all send up the bad signal. We gonna make time. But what, what I'm saying is you all are, we're creating a new canon. And Mark, what you did with Chris when y'all were here in 07, understand that you created the container to be poured into. Word. So now we have to switch the container because mm -hmm. we're moving into a new space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that before Michelle takes us out. And just to let you both know, we love both of you so much. Mm -hmm. and, you know, family. Yeah. Love you. Yeah. Love you both. And thank, thanks to, you know, University of Wisconsin Madison Arts and and all of them and all of them, <laughs> all the folks, you know that that made this possible. You know that put this all. I mean, mm, thank you so much. This is like revolutionary what y'all are doing. No, this is like what we is, are doing. What we we, what we are doing. Thank you. What we are doing is like all this revolutionary creativity and you know progression in the time of upside down bizarro world is really incredible, you know? And um, I'm so grateful for that. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you for, for inviting me. Thank you for believing in me. Absolutely. Thank you for seeing me, yo. Thank you don't have a choice. Neither one of you, you don't have a choice. Remember, <laughs> assignments. you don't have a choice, but you gotta be loved on because we gotta carry y'all. We gotta hold you, not carry you, hold you so mm. that do what you're supposed to do here. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, you know, I just want to say thanks to you, Mark, as well, for just, um, you know, when I was told that you were uh, the first fellow for this um, fellowship, I, I definitely was like, oh my God, we got big shoes to fill. And it also gave me, um, an understanding of where I could go, which is almost anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it it removed the box and the 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 wrapping and and what I think thought I had to do to be in that space because um, mm -hmm. I know what you do, right. and um and so it gave me a uh, um room to do the thing and uh and and also the space to wrap myself around my story, right? Because I could have very easily went with a whole bunch of folks up here in New York and like did the thing, but I went with this real, like I, I brought in all women that I am connected to that are part of my journey and part of um, the reason why I do what I do. And so that, you know, I want to say thank you for that, to you for that, because, you know, just knowing, you know, how you roll in spaces and, and the work that you've done, laid the groundwork for that. And um, so I'm appreciative of that. And Ursula, you are Oh, this was divine. This is everything y'all talked about on here because Ursula and I hadn't seen each other for years, like mm. years. And mm. we ran into each other in September in LA, um, September 2019. So we hadn't, I hadn't even gotten this opportunity yet to, to apply. I hadn't even heard about this. And we were like, and she said, well, when are we going to work together? She put mm. it out there in the universe. And I was like, Oh my God, I got all these ideas. I just created a piece. Here's this to your work. And this, you know, it was just kind of divine, you know, um, staring to staring me to what was going to be my next thing. Little did I know um, that this was going to be it. And this is going to be our first opportunity, not only, but first. And so, you know, this, this is, is amazing. No, we've been talking like this is like every, you know, come on. Hmm. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm just like, 
Oh, and you know what else I want to say? Follow through. As artists, we appreciate when people really follow through with us. Yeah. You know, they, when they say, oh, you know what? There's this thing I have in mind that I want to do. And, you know, I, I kind of like protect myself and just don't get excited, which might be wrong for me, but it's, it's been my protection and my shield. Because mm. so often it, it won't, you know, pan out. And so I really appreciate you, Michelle, um, for putting it out there and making it happen, for talking about it and making it happen and still, you know, inviting me and keeping me in the mix and making it real and bringing it to full fruition. And um, yeah, thank you. Grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Holland. Um, I'm going to say, Sophia, you coming back in so we can say good night and thank you to Omai and First Wave and all the folks um, that made this happen. Yes. Thank you, First Wave. Thank you, Chris. Thank Hello. you. Thank, Chris you Walker, thank you so much. Thank you, First Wave. And thank you, Gretchen. <laughs> shout out to a huge shout out to our digital media manager, Gretchen, for pulling this together. Um, thank you all so much for this conversation. I was just sitting in the wing, taking down notes, texting other folks <laughs> Mark, from Mark talking about it's a it's a thing to make a thing, but then there's also making a space and everyone on this call being pioneers of that um, and really laying the foundation of what First Wave benefits from in terms of making a space for young people at this university to carry the mantle and to carry that baton in the relay race of um, hip hop and higher ed and also hip hop and activism and what it means to be the true leaders of this <laughs> country that's also been spoken to. Um, we're just so honored, you know, this festival is about an intergenerational conversation and I got emotional sitting in the side, just sitting back and being like, look at these OGs talking about their <laughs> OGs, talking about them being in college, talking about them being young. And, and truly, you know, this week we're engaging with ninth graders and 22 year olds and people who are looking to think like, well, this is what I do now. And where do I want to go with it? And you all have truly just embodied what it means uh, to be hip hop, to be about the community, mm -hmm. um, to be about lifting as you climb and to continue mm -hmm. that with children, with family, with each other. Um, another thing in our group chat was just talking about your camaraderie yeah. and um, talking about coming up with people and at this time being able to look back and say, look how far we've come. Mm -hmm. so I want you to know, <clears throat> every element of this conversation hit home. And I hope you take a moment to look back through the chat. And um, I just can't thank you all enough for coming together. And for, honestly, I felt like y'all let us be a fly on the wall with like a little family reunion uh, situation. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And Ursula, thank you so much for sharing your work with us today. Um, just, you. and also calling in what's happening in Philly right now. Um, it's just, can't thank you all enough. So thank you so much. Shout out to Michelle and Dwayne for coordinating this entire residency. Uh, UW Madison does not know the gift that you gave them. And we're just here to amplify the incredible work that you're doing. Um, shout out to the arts division, the interdisciplinary artist residency program. And of course, uh, thank you, Mark, for joining us and, and really bridging this gap from all since 2000. Yeah seven and bringing us all, you know, closing the loop. So well. thank you all so much for joining us. Um, tomorrow we have another, we have a couple other events uh, at seven o'clock. We're doing a first wave reunion showcase featuring um, everybody from the second cohort of first wave in 2008 to the 13th cohort of first wave uh, wow. that are the freshmen this year. Uh, we're also having Mark Wimuthi Joseph in conversation with the legendary Rafael Casal, who was our inaugural creative director. And so um, that's just a big shout out for what's happening tomorrow. Uh, thank you again, Wimuthi, Michelle, Dwayne, Ursula for joining us. And again, for this incredible conversation and allowing us to witness living legends talk about their journey and about what matters to y'all today. Um, and and we will, you know, continue to amplify and move forward. 
So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Sophia. Well, Sophia, thank you. We hold each other up. We hold each other up. Got to. Got to. Especially right now. Right on. All Peace, right. y'all. Peace. Have a good yeah, night. Everyone. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Peace.